There are certain subjects that we would hope would be covered that are of interest to this club, which would be business development, education, law enforcement, health care, and if we have time, the St. John's River. On those subjects, each candidate would have one minute to respond. So beginning with your opening remarks with 90 seconds apiece, Ms. Allen, you're on. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is an amazing opportunity to be here to speak with a such a diverse group of people and my fellow Rotarians. Thank you so much for having me here. It's also amazing that all who seek this seat did not find it necessary to come and share their vision and goals for Jacksonville, which leads to the problems that we have in Jacksonville needing change. But change only comes with a definitive plan, and I have one. I have a plan to operate from the mayor's office with equity and participatory governance. My background, I have a PhD in public administration with a focus on municipal government. Focusing on participatory government where the citizens actually have an opportunity to give input into the decision-making processes that govern our lives. That's important. I believe that equity, not equality, is necessary doing what's necessary, when it's necessary, where it's necessary, throughout the city, without neglecting any of the other areas of our town. Until we all have made it, none of us have actually made it because we are one people, and that's the way I see Jacksonville. I'm a native of Jacksonville, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Cumber. Thank you for having me. I'm Leanna Cumber, and I believe in the American dream. This is the best city in the best state, in the best country. My father escaped Cuba in 1961, escaped a brutal communist regime. I share his passion for freedom, for change, and accountability. Those things are all critical to a thriving economy and a thriving community. We need to get moving in this city. I'm a mom of two young kids, a lawyer, a small business owner, and a former teacher. And I proudly serve on the Jacksonville City Council. On there, I have worked hard to lower your taxes and make this city safer. Why? Because I understand what it's like, my family understands what it's like to grow up living paycheck to paycheck and not being able to afford the doubling of the gas tax that Daniel Davis supported. I believe in more action and less talk. Just a few months ago, a Fox News correspondent came and said, Jacksonville downtown is a mess. That was embarrassing for the nation to hear. I love this city. We need to get moving to make sure this city is the best it can be for our children and our grandchildren. We need to hold our leaders accountable so a select powerful few can't sell our utility for their own personal gain. I'm asking for your vote so that we can get moving to get a vibrant downtown and so that we can address our issues together, publics, improve our public safety, improve our education, end these tax hikes, and end this corruption. So thank you for having me. I think it's critical to show up, and I'm really happy to go forward today. Thank you again. Thank you. Ms. Deegan. I'm Donna Deegan, and for 25 years, I had the privilege of delivering the evening news to the people of Jacksonville. The same Jacksonville where my great-great-grandfather immigrated in 1905 and built the American dream. The same Jacksonville that rallied around me through three bouts with breast cancer. And the same Jacksonville that I truly believe can reach its full promises, if only if we will keep our promises to her people and build on that dream. As an anchor, I held the powerful to account. I visited every neighborhood in this city, and I heard their stories, their tragedies, and their triumphs. And over and over again, I heard the same thing. There's a wall between me and my city government. It works for the powerful. It doesn't work for the working people. Sadly, I'm still hearing those stories today. I am running for mayor to break down those walls, to bring the people inside. And I know how to vision forward because I've done it. I have built and led a foundation with a multi-million dollar budget 
that brings millions in economic impact to this city every year and people from all over the world that have brought millions to our underserved population who are fighting to put food on the table and pay for their medicine and that have brought millions of dollars to our brightest researchers right here in Jacksonville who are trying to find a cure. We can have the city that we want. We can. We simply have to open it up to everybody. We have to bring everybody in. It really is true that when we all do better, we all do better. I am the person that brings the vision to do that. I cannot wait to get to work. I've done it before. I'll continue to show up for this city, and I look so forward to this continuing conversation. Thank you, Ms. Diga. Mr. Ferraro. Good afternoon. My name's Al Ferrero. I'm one of the city councilmen in District 2. I've been married for 32 years. I've been a business owner for 37 years. I've got a daughter who's 27. Um, I got into city council because I wanted to do the things that a lot of people want to see done, the roads or infrastructure, to see things that are getting done. And I did that in my first four years. During the second term, I started seeing civil unrest. I started seeing the sale of JEA. I seen the pandemic. I saw corruption that was happening in our city. These are things that I was upset with that I wanted to do something about. Since I've been on city council, it's given me the opportunity to see what works and what doesn't. We have a lot of money in this city. Sometimes we talk about $1.5 billion, but it's really 7.6. Our roads, our infrastructure should be, should be in a lot better condition. The safety of our city with a crime, that is one of my biggest focuses. I walk with mad dads and, and I go through different parts of our city and see shell casings next to playgrounds and next to swing sets. There's a problem that we have in our city, safety and our spending problem. As your mayor, I will watch over that and I will bring our city and our community back together the way Jacksonville used to be. I, I remember that I used to be able to go outside and not have to lock the doors. And that was throughout our whole city and it has changed. So if you elect me, safety is going to be something I'm going to watch over along with the money. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you. Ms. Gibson. Uh, uh, oh, is it on already? Okay. I didn't see the green light. But thank you. And good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I've been serving above myself from very young age. Um, when I asked my parents if our family could be a participating family in the probation friend program that existed some years ago but is not, is not ex in existence today. A mayor and the CEO of this city should have a very diverse background in experiences and with people. I've been to nursing homes, senior centers. These are not things that I had to do but these are things that I wanted to do. I've taken the Navy guys and, and, and ladies to those senior centers. The men love the women and the women love to hug the men. I've gone to storm events after those storms in this community, passing out uh, care packages with staff from JEA, letting people know their lights would be on soon and not to worry. And here's a comfort package that we've prepared for you. I've been to those senior centers taking fruit, nursing homes, every nursing home in my district and in some others, taking socks. I'm a charter member of Citizens for Tree Protection, member of Scenic Jacksonville. I'm on the Public Library Advisory Board. I'm a charter member of the Northwest CDC. I filed unemployment bills for victims of domestic violence, so if they have to leave work, they can still receive their benefits. I've brought home funding for Five Star Veterans, Northeast Florida Women's Veterans, Family Support Services, Agape. I created the Elder Abuse Task Force so that this state would know what it needs to do to make sure our seniors are safe. Thank you, Mr. Kiesler. My name is Frank Kiesler. Um, my family's been here for uh, almost a century. Um, there is a major difference between me and every other candidate up here, and that is I'm not running for the office of mayor. I couldn't run from running for the office of mayor. Two years ago, when this country went nuts and our world turned itself on an ear, 
And I saw our mayor in the middle of the night take down Jackson's statue. I said, dear God, what kind of people are we? Nothing we do as people is right or has legitimacy under the color of darkness and in the shadows of light. But more importantly, how long will we placate, patronize, and pander the black community with a gesture that does nothing? Every time we do that, we basically say, we don't care. I care. I grew up here. I saw Northwest Jacksonville. I used to ride around with the Neptune Beach Police as a 16-year-old. I almost went to work for the FBI when I came out of tax school. And I'd hear zone, I think, one when I was 16 years old. What's that? That's Northwest Jacksonville. That's our murder capital of the city. Fifty years later, and on the south side, we rode our dirt bikes through palmettas and pine trees, and that's all there was 50 years ago. Billions of dollars of infrastructure in southeast southern Jacksonville and northwest Jacksonville, one of the original places that Jacksonville lived. Floods when it rains or when the people flush their toilets and the, the dang schools, economics, everything is a shooting gallery today. So I have a vision and a plan, and God's given me a lot of ideas and a lot of stuff that I've done in the last two years. I didn't spend the last two years trying to build a magnificent campaign. I spent two years trying to be a leader for you and learn what I needed to learn and see what God would put and architect Mr. Pieces. Kiesler, I don't mean to be rude to interrupt, but I don't mean to be rude to interrupt, but there are time constraints, so I must ask you to I'm sorry, up. I didn't hear the bill. Oh, sorry. I, I apologize. I'll blame him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Richardson. I, Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Teresa Richardson, and it's an honor to be here. It's an honor also to be on stage with so many people that I've admired pretty much ever since they have been in politics. And I would just like for you to know that I'm here today for this specific reason. I believe in the bold new city of the South. Indeed, not just words. And the people of Jacksonville, what we have been receiving for the last years are words, empty words, empty promises. And the time for that is to cease and desist. That's why I'm here. I'm also here because as a young child, my mother always instilled in me that I can do anything that I wanted to do and I was just crazy enough to believe her. <laughs> and so that's why I'm here, because I believe that Jacksonville, it's time for a change. It's time for new leadership. The wasteful taxpayer money that has been spent and wasted. For what reason? What have we as citizens, what have we benefited from it? We paid the money into the system. Look at the half price, half cent sales tax we paid for years. And it has to stop. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. I want to do that. And I am a, how can I put it? I'm a servant, a servant of the citizens. I would like to continue to serve you. And I feel as though I can serve you even better in a higher capacity as mayor. I will have an open door policy and I will welcome any suggestions, any ideas. Thank you. We're going to turn now to specific topics, the first of which is education. And Ms. Richardson, we're going to begin with you and work back this way. Uh, Sorry, our, I didn't hear your question. Education. I haven't asked you yet. Hold on one second. OK. It's, it's on easy. the subject of education. Our courts have determined that the school board is an independent agency of our local government. Our governor has now asserted a dramatic role in public education. As mayor, what would you see as your role in the education of children in this community? My role as mayor would be to make sure that every child have the opportunity that they need to continue their education. I would like to see paraprofessionals more in each classroom, maybe once a month, to oversee just in case a child may be suffering from dyslexia. That could be a reason why they're not learning. So it could be many reasons why a child 
have not succeeded as well as they should. So if I was mayor, I would just make sure that our children have the necessity, the needed tools that they need. Make sure the teachers, for one, are taken care of. Our teachers are victims. We hire them to educate our children, but we give them little resources and expect for them to come out of their own pockets for our children. That's not fair. So I would divert a lot of money back to the teachers. If you're from Jacksonville, you know that the mayor's office is really a platform to push a, a credible school program, and he doesn't really have or she doesn't have the actual authority to implement school board policy. But I know from living here 50 years, the mayor's program usually is the way that the, the board goes, or at least there's clear ear of the board to the mayor's voice. So I've designed and been put in my heart to create what I'm calling the Lifting Heads program of the Duval County Public School program. Lifting the heads of our elementary students to know they were created with a purpose, lifting the heads of our middle schoolers to know they were created for a purpose, and lifting the heads of our senior highs by providing them the best high schools in the nation so they go out in this 21st century equipped in a purpose. Ms. Gibson? And, and just so everyone knows, if I hadn't said earlier, it's 60 seconds, not 90 for this, and I apologize, but oh, okay. we'll get there. <laughs> I have the trick mic. Okay, so I'm good now. I'm sorry. In terms of education, um, the mayor certainly is a part of um, the voice of what should happen with education, even though the school board is the policymaker um, and the determining of, of the advancement of that po po policy. The unfortunate circumstances, I believe that there has been some negative impact in our schools in, in Jacksonville as well as across the state with book banning and um, not being able to teach history just to talk about what people overcame but not what they overcame. And so the good news is I've visited um, at least three schools a year every year since I've been in the legislature teaching kids about representative Government. Was that the bell? No, it's not the end. You have another 15 oh. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching young people about representative government, making them um, honorary senators and house members for the day. And generally, we vote on what's going to be on the lunch menu um, for, for them. And it's very interesting to watch. Certainly, teacher pay is an issue um, that the mayor can advocate for. Um, in Tallahassee and the good news is I still have many friends in Tallahassee and have worked across the aisle my entire career so that I could do the best and bring home dollars um, for our community. And so I'm happy to lift my, lift my voice um, in that realm, which I've always done anyway, and I believe the mayor should be a leader on that and do those school visits that I've always done to impress upon our young people, their need to value citizenship and be, and what's possible. Because I've taken some kids to a, a Boeing trip. Yeah, did I? What, Thank you, Mr. Ferrero. <laughs> Thank you. Policies make the difference in everything, whether it's city government or whether it's schools. Part of the problem that's happening with our schools is we don't have the things that we were brought up with, things that our, our kids are gonna be needing to be able to figure out a checkbook, to figure out the, the things in life that um, are important. It's, it's not just high technical things, and we've gotten, gotten away from that. We should be doing more of the things that we did traditional teaching. And as a mayor, you can't enforce that because of the separate governments of consolidated city, but you can certainly get on the platform, and you can certainly get up and talk about the things that you feel are right or wrong. The mayor ha has a, a, a pulpit of talking about things of parents' rights. It, it can get up there and, and take positions on different things that are coming up in the school. So traditional teachings are things that I would be supporting, and I would like to get back to some of the basics of what, what we had when we were growing up. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Diggin? Well, I think the, the biggest thing that you can do from the mayor's office for our public schools is to support our duly elected school board. 
Um, I don't think we see too much of that right now, and I would like to see our mayor's office support uh, what our school superintendent is trying to do with our schools, and frankly, I think she's done a fantastic job given everything that she's had as challenges over the past several years. Also, as mayor, I will say that I think that my platform, regardless of the issue that we're talking about, whether it's education or crime, uh, will help to move us forward. We, sh we need to continue to, to fund the Kids Hope Alliance so that we have an opportunity for wraparound services and for after school programs for our kids. But my platform of good infrastructure, good health, and a good economy is the way to make sure that our kids go to school ready to learn. Right now, so many times, they don't have a, a, a roof over their head, or they don't have the food that they need, or their parents don't have the opportunity that will make them prepared to go to school and learn. And I think as a mayor, my job is to create that opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Cumber. Thank you. So I was a third grade and fifth grade teacher, and I'm a mom of a nine and 11 year old. Our school system's failing our kids. Our reading scores have gone from 60 to 47% in six years. Everyone in the city should be screaming about it from the mayor, from Daniel Davis, the CEO of the chamber, who's trying to bring businesses in how do you bring businesses in when our reading scores are at 47%? How do we reduce crime when our reading scores are at 47%? If it's not the mayor's problem to fix the schools, I don't want to hear that as a parent. I don't want to be sending my kids to school and be told as a parent that the mayor of the city, of the 12th largest city in the country, has no control over how my kids are learning and have no control to make sure that my kids are learning how to read these are the things that we need to focus on, and we need to get back to basics and get these literacy rates up in this city. Thank you. Ms. Allen. I am a former educator in Duval County Public Schools, but I understand that the education of our children is not, is not actually a mayoral uh, responsibility. However, my promise is to work very closely with the school board and the superintendent lending any expertise that I have, making sure that um, we support them financially when applicable to assure that Jacksonville and Duval County school system is attractive to top quality educators and making sure that our children are well nourished during the school day because in some instances, our children only receive nourishment when they are at school. Thank you. I'm going to change the subject to law enforcement. Uh, Ms. Allen, we'll begin with you this time. Uh, the city website says the sheriff receives 53% of the city's discretionary budget, figure $533 million, which rises each year, as does crime rise each year. As mayor, what would you do to try to stem crime and therefore save us some money? Similarly to the educational system, crime is not a mayoral function. Fighting crime is not a mayoral function, but a gang. It is the top seat in the city along with the sheriff. So again, my promise is to work very closely with the sheriff, making sure that the allocation of funds, I don't think that we should reduce the funding, I think we need to look at the reallocation of funds, making sure that the funds are being best used in the areas that they, that they need to be used. That is how I will support the sheriff, whomever the sheriff is in our next election. I will walk, work very closely with them to make sure that we're on the same page. I will be dealing with the citizens of Jacksonville, hearing what where their hearts are as it relates to their relationship with the, with the sheriff department and sharing that with those things with him and hoping to build um, trust and admiration and respect between the citizens and the sheriff's department. Thank you, Ms. Cumber. Thank you. First, I fully support fully funding our JSO and making sure that our men and women in uniform have everything that they need to keep our families safe. We need to start working on these problems before they get to the law enforcement stage. So I, what I've done in council is I created a nuisance abatement board, which in short, for the very first time in the city, the city has the power to shut down businesses that are harboring illegal activity. I also raised the stripping age to 21. Why? Because there is not one daughter, one little girl in this city 
who should be groomed to go dance and strip at our strip clubs. Amen. These are the things that we can do proactively from the mayor's seat. Working with the sheriff, making sure the sheriff has all the resources they need, and then figuring out how do we act proactively rather than reactively. Thank you, Ms. Deegan. Well, I think it's important for the mayor's office to work with the sheriff's office to make our city as safe as it can possibly be. It's a very dangerous and difficult job. I think it's going to be very important for us to foster conversations in this community, which we have shut down, that we shouldn't shut down, that would help us to have those difficult and uncomfortable conversations that would make things better between our community and our police department. I do believe we need to fully fund our police. I think we also need to make sure that we are getting into our neighborhoods and making sure that we have the infrastructure in those neighborhoods that will make for safer neighborhoods. We need a, a more community-based policing model where we have our officers embedded in our communities creating relationships with our police officers and we need to make sure that our kids are healthy we have some of the worst health outcomes in the state in our city and unless we have healthy kids and healthy families uh, those things are going to impact crime as well so I think it's very important for the mayor's office to set the example and to work with the sheriff's office and I think it's very very important to open some lines of communication that have frankly been closed off for too long thank you mr. Ferraro Breaking the code of silence, it's something we have to do. Not all parts of town look the same. Like I said earlier, we've got shell casings around kids' playgrounds. We've got to break the code of silence, and as the number one elected official in the city, going out to show in the different parts of the community that we are going to support them. This is something I've already been doing by going through different neighborhoods. District 2 is one of the safest areas of town because we work with the sheriff's office. We get these bad guys off the street. And as the highest elected official, you can do something about it. The police are reactive. We've got, to, we've got to do something proactive to it. So I would be going out into these communities, just like the police are, getting the community to understand that we have to support our police and get these bad guys off the street. I would continue doing more of that. I would also see about putting prisoners out working in the streets, cleaning our sidewalks, cleaning our streets, and getting things done like we used to for a couple reasons. One, you want kids when they're growing up to see that there's going to be consequences for what they do. And we also have a big labor pool down at the, the jail that we should be using. We also want to get these prisoners to where they can end up coming back and having a job when they get out. So there's a lot of things I'd like to talk about this that's more than the time I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gibson. Thank you. Um, as a mayor, I would come to the office with a degree in criminology from the Florida State University and have the um, certain want to and capacity to at least meet with a sheriff, um, understanding that sometimes crime is cyclical. And the other um, um, point for us as a city is we have a, a pretty young um, population in our city. The average age is about 35, between 35 and 38. And that's generally a time um, that people continue to commit different types of crimes, right? So as people age, the crime rate begins to drop, but we may not have that opportunity, so we have to increase our law enforcement. And so um, I believe in technology, but not the entire budget um, in, in the technological world. I've written a civil citations bill, I believe in prevention, giving a bipartisan bill that gives our young people a second chance. I've had town hall meetings on police community relations um, more than once. So that that's what we need to do is build trust. And then people appreciate officers on the street, without a doubt. They want to feel safe, and it looks safe when we have officers in our neighborhoods, as well as developed relationships with those officers. Back in the day, the, um, the, some of the, our officers policed the communities that they grew up in because they knew the community and the community knew them. And so if we can, we can get back to that type of policing where our offices go where they know people and people then um, have a better community relationship and as mayor I would certainly talk with the sheriff about those possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kiesler. Um Quickly I just want to go right back to the education issue because this is important. I've spoken to several PGA professionals that I knew in the golf industry back in 90 when I ran a golf company and what's been laid on my mind and they love is a program called Golf Not Guns. 
And the theory and the thesis is if we let a child hit that little 1.68 dimpled ball dead on the dime, they'll feel that in their loin that resonates into their souls and they'll never pick up a gun to take one. I think one of the greatest things we can do is teach our kids how to play this game of golf. But back to the matter of law enforcement. My approach to law enforcement is a whole new change. It's creating the first Sentinel Science College, or College of Sentinel Science, Technology, Operations, and Procedures in Jacksonville University in association with U of F Health, in association with our law enforcement and the Fire Academy. I've already met with the University of Florida's Vice President about this very concept of a 21st century that is a cross-disciplined safety officer. They're already doing it in Europe. I did it in Homewood, Alabama in 2005 in a model, but unfortunately the sheer cliff of 2008 stopped that development. But that's the future. It takes the target off the backs of our police officers and it raises the whole level of community involvement that now we have a safety net where everybody is a 21st century cross-trained, specialized within their each field. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Richardson. Yes. My view for the crime rate is concerned is we can increase the budget trillions of dollars. That's not going to stop the crime as we witness year after year, day after day. Look at the six o'clock news. The first thing you hear is so many people have gotten shot, killed, or have been tampered with. My vision would be simply this. We need to get to the root of the problem with crime. Find out why so many crimes are being committed. Until we get to the core root, it's just like a cancer. It will continue. So we need to focus more on how can we prevent crimes. And I say start with the family. That's where the crime begins, with each individual person. Maybe start organizations, have meetings with family members. So things that we can talk about, we can come to a conclusion before it get to the hands of our beloved police officers. That will protect their lives, that will protect my life, that will protect your lives. Let's get to the root of the problem. Why do we have so much crime here? It starts with each individual household. It starts with each individual. Let's talk more with our children. Let's make them fearful for doing crime. We got to put the fear back into people. That's why crime is so high. They have no fear of going to jail. Once we get that fear back, it will be a change. Thank you. Let me change the subject to business development and we'll start with you, Ms. Richardson. And it's a <laughs> two-pronged question. First is what do you consider the most effective vehicles to attract new business to Jacksonville and keep them here? And is it important as mayor that downtown be developed any more so than any other part of the city? Well, yes, if I can, sir, I would like to answer the last question first. I definitely believe that Jacksonville should be one of the boldest places to visit. There's no reason why we cannot be. We used to be. We used to have lights, camera, and action here. Used to be one of the major movie capitals in the world. We need to get back to that. And we have the resources to do it. We have the intelligence to do it. What we need is a new generation to create that. And so I said, we can do it. Let's make that happen. I have no doubt at all that this place can be the envy of the world. Why we can't be like in Orlando and have a Disney World? <laughs> Why we can't be like Atlanta and have six flags? We have the space. We have the funds. We have the backbone. We have the intelligence. All we need are leaders that will get that job done. And before my time run out, sir, would you please repeat the first part of your question? Yes. <laughs> what do you consider to be the most effective vehicles to attract business to Jacksonville and keep it here? That's 15 seconds, though. <laughs> okay. The most effective way to attract business to come here to Jacksonville is to show them what businesses currently are doing. Once they see how businesses have bloomed, blossomed, and grown here in a safe environment, that would attract other businesses. Who want to come to a town with the fear that they're going to get shot, they're going to get robbed? That's a deterrent. So that's how I think we can attract more business. We need to clean up our act. 
Thank you. Mr. Kiesler. Um, Hoover said the greatest asset of our nation is our children. Roosevelt, when talking about the national park system, said our duty is to the unborn generations to come and come and come in the next century. If we care that about our parks, don't you think we ought to care that about our children? Our greatest asset is the future generation of our children. And I believe when you have a city that has an education program that's a public education program where we're teaching our children, not indoctrinating our children, and when we're inspiring them for a reason to want to be educated. When I was a kid, we wanted to go to school. It was a time of the television coming on. I'm dating myself. But seriously, we need to get back to, to letting our children know that. And in the world of business development and downtown, absolutely. The reason why I love downtown development is because the infrastructure's there. It's already been scraped and filled, and the hard concrete and the hardscape is there. I think it's a good thing for us to capitalize as a nation and a city on the infrastructure we have in place and not create more watershed, if you will. And I think downtown, any thriving city is going to have a thriving downtown. Thank you. Ms. Gibson? Thank you. Uh, I believe that business development is also economic development. Um, and I believe, I don't mind uh, businesses coming to downtown. However, I also believe that in our communities, in our neighborhoods that continue to struggle, small business is more of the focus um, in because when the neighborhoods are thriving, when crime is low, when we have livable communities, everybody will want to bring their business to Jacksonville. And so the, the other issue that I have though is when we talk about incentives um, for bringing uh, businesses here, if they have the money, we could use those incentives for neighborhoods. Also, um, we can create more joint venture partners. That's what I would do as mayor, is help, help our smaller businesses, particularly our minority businesses who are being left out, create joint venture partners um, through the JSEB program so that they're ready to participate. And also, I would want business development to include spinoff jobs for those small businesses outside of downtown. That is extremely important for economic development. Thank you. Mr. Ferraro. Thank you. I do support the development of downtown, but I'd want to do it in a way that it, it works. I remember when I grew up down here, we had crawdaddies, we had the river walk, we had uh, the landing, we had a lot of things, and, and it drew people downtown. We need to do something like that again. Um, so I am for that, and I have also been the waterways chair for quite a, several years, uh, and, we're, and we're just not developing our waterways. Um, that's one of our natural assets that we have. As far as uh, what we could do as far as tracking, the Office of Economic Development that is with the mayor's office, you know, we, we end up getting a lot of businesses that come here. I have personally, as a council member, had businesses come here, and what ends up happening is we end up giving those away like to the chamber and other different groups to where it ends up getting money to different places other than back into the city. So I'd want to make sure that these dollars are going back into the city that gets all these things that we're talking about we want to enhance and make our city better, safer, cleaner, more fun. I would track that as far as with the office that we already have established and I would make sure a lot more of this stays in the city and in the taxpayer's pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Deegan? Listen, it's all about quality of life. You attract people to your city with a good quality of life and, and that starts with the number one pillar of my campaign and that is infrastructure. Infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. If we take care of the public infrastructure, which we have neglected to our own peril, then we would have all sorts of companies that would want to come to Jacksonville and we wouldn't have to give away the farm to bring them here. We would be able to bring them here because of the quality of life. We also need to bring more arts and entertainment into our downtown. That's what our young people want. If we want our young people to want to stay here and raise their kids, we got to bring more arts and entertainment to our downtown. And we frankly have got to make sure we are keeping all of those, well we can't, too late to keep, we've got to make good on the promises that we have broken over the years uh, after consolidation and make sure that we are taking care of the infrastructure in our neighborhoods that have been ta paying taxes forever and ever and are not getting the return on those taxes. That's another way to build our small businesses. Thank you, Ms. Cummer. Thank you. 
We re recruit and retain businesses through being the best education system in the entire state of Florida. We do that through being the best school choice city in the state and having the best parental empowerment. Now, I'll tell you what I won't do in downtown, and I've proven that I won't. I won't spend $500 million, double all of your gas tax, to spend $500 million on the Skyway downtown, like the mayor and the chamber did. Downtown is critical. We are the only city on 90, the 95 runs through between Richmond, Virginia, and Miami. Having a core, having a vibrant core, is critical to the rest of our city. We can do it, we need to focus on it, but we don't do it by blowing tax dollars on the Skyway. We do it by improving our, our education system and recruiting people to come downtown and fixing the basic things downtown and getting more boats on the river. Thank you. Ms. Allen? Uh, the first part of your question was to identify, I think the answer to that would be to identify the kinds of business entities that reflect the demographics and the desires of the citizens of Jacksonville. After all, they're the ones who are going to support it. That's how we retain um, businesses in the Jacksonville area. Downtown is the heart of every major city. Jacksonville has hard trouble and is in need of a transplant. Jacksonville, a, a viable downtown has to have residential, retail, entertainment, and reliable transportation. When we establish those things, we will find that Jacksonville will become the city that we all hoped that it would be over the last decades. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to one last subject in the interest of time, and that's the St. John's River and its tributaries. We read a lot about sea level rise and saltwater intrusion that kills the grasses in the river, which means the manatees can't eat and the manatees die. We read about storm surge into the neighborhoods now that we hadn't read in years past. But at the same time, we read about the Emerald Trail developing. As mayor, what would you be or see as your leadership position versus the St. John's River and its tributaries moving forward eight years? What are we gonna do? As mayor, I would continue to research as I have done. I have spoken with uh, Dr. Ben Tuggle, who is over Wildlife and Preserve nationally, um, finding out exactly whether or not dredging is something that we need to do. I was told that we need to be sure that we are not dredging and causing more issues with overgrowth and those sorts of things. So I don't have a definitive complete plan, but I do have the resources available to me to find out exactly what Jacksonville does need, and then we will work along those lines to make sure that we have what we need to uh, solve the issues that we are experiencing with our river. Ms. Glover? Thank you. I love talking about the river. Jacksonville has this amazing asset, the St. John's River. Except what's crazy to me is any given day, no matter how beautiful it is, there are no boats on the river. Why? Because if you own a boat, if you're one of the 22,000 boat owners in this city and you want to go somewhere on your boat, you need to either belong to a private club or two private clubs if you want to go to a different one or go out of the county. That is crazy. We need to make sure that we have places to boat to. We need to build up our marinas. We need to make it a place that people want to come, build up those marinas downtown, have places where we can boat. We should be using the river all the time. We are in the best state, and we have this amazing asset with dolphins and manatees, and nobody uses it. And that is one of the biggest problems. We need to start giving, giving people choices to boat to on the river. Thank you, Ms. Diggin. Well, we're not gonna have those dolphins and manatees in our river forever if we don't start taking better care of it. So that's priority number one. Uh, number two is we absolutely need to open up access to our river. We need to develop in a way that opens access to our river to people, that we don't build right up to the edge. That's terrible for resiliency. It's terrible for the river. We have to make sure that if we want a thriving riverfront in downtown, that we open up those opportunities for people to be able to access the river, but also that we build those fortifications that make sure that as water continues to rise, that we have a defense against that. That's going to that is completely anticipated 
For years and years, we knew this was coming, and it's only going to get worse. So we need to care for the health of our river, we need to open it up to our people, and we need to make sure that we value this incredible asset that we have in Jacksonville that really we're going to lose if we don't start to take care of it in some sort of major way. Mr. Farrell. Thank you. Both sides of my district are on both sides of the river as it comes in, and it's one of the highest flood areas that we have in the city. We put in an overlay that is the biggest overlay in the city of Jacksonville. And what we've tried to do is watch how we're, we're doing with the water and the filtering of the water through the marshes, through the grasses. We talked about this in waterways. Mm -hmm. How are we going to filter out the water? How are we going to take surges? How are we going to uh, take new developments? And how's that going to play into a fact as far as flooding out areas? What's ended up happening is we have so much development going on that we're not looking at what the effects are. In the mayor's office, you have the planning department. You have the areas that you are in charge of, that you can either put forth or stop some of these developments. Some of the flooding issues that we have are areas where the water's rising and coming up through our drains, but some of the areas that we have, we're overbuilding and we're damming some of the water. And what's ended up happening is neighborhoods that we've had for generations and decades are getting flooded out because of new neighborhoods that are coming in that are running water into these areas that the old tributaries can't take the new runoff. So as the mayor, these are things that I would be watching and taking care of and watching over the community. I've said this before, I'm interested in the people that are living here right now, not so much as the ones that are coming here, because people have paid a lot of money to have their homes and we need to protect them and their neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Thank you, thank you. Um, in terms of um, the river, I've been out on the river, not only um, from Jacksonville area, but from the Putnam County area where I believe we need to um, remove the dam so the water flows more into our river. Um, and that is a fight that the river keeper and uh, um, some of us keep having with some of the um, uh, leaders over in Putnam. I also believe that we should have a better education campaign if you've never seen someone throw oil and other things in some of our um, retention ponds, it's because they don't understand the damage that it ultimately does to our river. And so I believe an educa a better education plan on letting people know that they should not do that, not throw things down the gutter. Um, and also I believe fertilizer has been pretty much dealt with, but we have a resiliency officer who needs to be much more visible um, in our community to talk to us about this issue. And certainly our port is important. I know that's been mentioned as, as um, a potential issue. So we have to figure out though how to mitigate for that because we want the bigger ships to come. We don't want to, ships to be turned away. And those larger ships come, they provide jobs here in our city um, as well as keep us in the game in the shipping industry, which is very competitive. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kiesel. Staying on the port issue, um, I grew up as a kid riding with my great uncle, who was a river pilot, all the way out to sea and back, bringing in ships when today they probably would have, you know, frowned on it, an eight-year-old at midnight climbing up a ladder at the one-mile buoy, but that's a fact. The reality is the port is one of our greatest assets. It is. I mean, that alone with our rail and highway system is really what makes Jacksonville the landscape and, the, and really the canvas for the city that really shows a nation how we do it. Our river is our great recreational and amenity and beauty. It really, I've lived here as I mentioned all my life. What's interesting is that there was a symposium at UNF four weeks ago that's an annual symposium on environmental that's put on by the DEP and the State Department of Environmental Protection and by JU, and I think one other university participates. It's been going on since Delaney. He's the one that started it. And it was absolutely amazing what was learned there about the dioxins and the hard metals and the arsenics and the various chemicals that are coming out of our tributaries and our watersheds. And the disturbance of those is what disturbs the heavy metals and creates a problem. But there's a real balance and a real science to it and a real issue there. And I was the only candidate that was there at that symposium. 
So I think our waterways are priceless and precious. I think our port is huge for us carrying on as a major city in the 21st century. Thank you. Ms. Richardson. Yes, well, thank you. Uh, speaking on that issue with our water, and that is true, and I've heard everyone state this, and I do agree, the water that we have downtown is priceless, and it's no reason why it should not be maintained and kept as pristine as the waters are in the Bahamas. Our water system needs to be clean. It needs to be filtered. And I would use the planning committee to come up with a plan that would not only clean the waters, keep them clean, but also come up with a plan to enlarge the barriers so when we do have hurricanes, storms, and bad weather, that water from the river won't overflow like it does in Riverside and just take over the ground area. So we need to have higher barriers also. And another issue that I would like to address is that when large boats come, it, you have to raise the Main Street Bridge. So I would like to see something implemented from the mayor's office that would make it a lot easier for large boats to come and not have to take the time away from the citizens to sit on the Main Street Bridge while the bridges have to escalate to let the large boats go by. So as much work can be done, but my main thing would be as I would appoint a committee that would look into these situations to give us improvement because that's our big seller, our water. That's what's going to contract, contact, uh, attract businesses to come here. That would attract the Jaguars to come here because it's the water. People love our, our, our land, our environment. Let's sell it. Let's make it big. But the way we can do that, we got to get, uh, take it to a new level. We need to get a committee together that can stop this algae, not only in the water downtown, but water everywhere is filled with algae trash. Why? It's too much research that can be done to stop this problem. It should be against the law to destroy something that God has given us that is priceless. Thank you. Now, we're going to close and allow, starting with you, Ms. Richardson, and working back this way, 45 seconds for your closing remarks, which I'm sure would seem like a sound bite in front of the media, but if you're mayor, I'm sure you're going to be really good at this. So you're on, Ms. Richardson. <laughs> You have 45 seconds. And I did not understand you, sir. What did you say? It's kind of difficult. You, you have 45 seconds to close. Give us your closing remarks. Okay. Well, closing remark is simply I enjoyed being here. And as your new mayor, you will have a new bold new city, not just in words, but in deed. And when I say indeed, we can be another Orlando. We can outdo Orlando. Why not? That would attract businesses that would attract new families, and we can get a handle on this crime. Because I'm looking at now our distinguished former sheriff here. You did an excellent job, sir. And I believe we should take that to another level. Protect our police officers. We don't need more, we need less. The way we can get less, let's go back to values in the family. We've gotten away from that. If we can redo the family structure, that's going to be a change. Mr. Kiesel. Um, how do I say thank you adequately that fate has brought me here? I believe either we are a people that really realize we better lift our heads, people in this nation, and take account of where we are. And we better understand nothing's going to change if it doesn't change in our cities first. No corporation is ever retooled from the corporate office to the market. We always go rebuild our stores at the market to retool. We're not going to change this country from Washington, D.C. down. It's going to take a city coming together with new ideas, bold ideas. Kennedy, when he addressed the 63 Irish Parliament about four months before he was assassinated, the only president, by the way, that's ever addressed the Irish Parliament, he said, what we need today is men who dream of things never thought of and ask, why not? So why not an education program that lifts the souls and spirits of our children and inspires them to, live, to learn? 
Why not a 21st century four disciplines bringing mental health into the street and the violence and the issues we face? Why not? The only thing that separates us is if we won't look each other in the eye and realize we all have meaning, we all have purpose, and let's come together and build a city that really awakens a nation and puts an eye on our little town of how we every day see free live. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Thank you. And thank you again for the invitation. I'm so sorry that we skipped over health care because health, your health is your wealth. Um, and we definitely need to talk about that as a city, as a mayor, I will be focused on health care. Uh, my mother was retired dean from um, health programs at FSCJ. I learned at her knee about people's health care um, and how we need to take care of that. I'm a member of the Community Hospice of Northeast Florida, a member of the Alzheimer's Disease um, Community Advisory Council. I passed a maternal health outcomes bill that the uh, Surgeon General is planning to replicate across the, across the state, even though he didn't give me and my um, house sponsor uh, credit for the bill. That took us two plus years to get $5 million. I'm proud to say that Agape is our um, contractor here in um, Jacksonville for the uh, t telehealth based program. As mayor and CEO and ambassador for our city, my sole focus will be on Jacksonville. I'll be accessible to all the people, not just a select few, and we've seen how that movie ends. I'll be focused on financial forecasting, transparency for our budget, affordable housing. Did you know that only 40% of Jacksonville residents own their own home? We need the affordable housing in Jacksonville. Someone mentioned downtown as a, a place for uh, development, for living. I believe that we should have um, not just rental housing downtown, but housing that people own, which will help to keep the vibrancy of the city. I believe in getting our federal dollars back and putting our funds in the communities that need it the most. We need more people coming to Jacksonville and spending the night. Development of downtown and livable communities will get us there. I like Mickey, I like NASCAR, but I love Jacksonville, and I want people to spend more time here. Did you know that our city is becoming very diverse? We need leadership that understands that. It's 50% white population and 50% minority and other. It's important to know that and I want to be your mayor, and I ask you for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferrara. Thank you, thank you all for being here today. Putting families first is our slogan, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I wanna make this city safe. I wanna bring this, the, the core functions back. I wanna stop this corruption. You know, when's the last time that you voted for somebody that you really felt was watching and listening over your tax dollars and your family, that you could reach out to that you had somebody who was gonna protect you and watch over to you. That's the, first, that's the first form of government what we're supposed to do is watch over our citizens. That's exactly what I would do. The core functions, our streets, our roads, our infrastructure, the, the ditches, all the different things that you see that are not getting done with all the taxpaying dollars that you're, you're sponsoring forward. The sale of the JEA, those types of things will go away when I come in here. I will stop the corruption. I will stop the good old boy system and I will put families first, and I will make sure that you, the taxpayer, are the ones that are looked over, and I will be that person. And I'm asking you for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Deegan. 61% of the people in this city in a recent poll said that we are on the wrong track and we need a new direction. I am ready to bring change for good to this city. I have been showing up for this city, doing the work my entire life. I have been a voice for the voiceless, Listen, I love our big corporations as much as everybody else, but they don't need a voice. They got a bullhorn. We need a voice for our neighborhoods. We need a voice for the people who are constantly left behind in this city. I left the safe confines of philanthropy where everybody loves you for the fairly ugly and getting uglier world of politics where I've been called everything but a child of God already because I love this city more than anything in the world. And I believe that my vision that I have shown this city, my ability to lead, my courage to fight corruption is the way forward. And I ask for your vote and I'm so grateful for your time. Thank you, Ms. Cumber. 
Thank you. I've worked as a lawyer, built a business, and built a life in this great city. If I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to be your mayor, I will always be accountable to you. I'm here because I think that my job as a public servant is showing up. And so let's be honest and let's talk about who's not here today, Daniel Davis. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of career politicians saying you have to wait in line and wait for your turn. I didn't get where I am waiting my turn. And I'll tell you, there is no mom out there when she's fighting for her kids who is going to wait in line. Running for mayor is not a coronation. Showing up is critical. I work hard and I get results. I fought against doubling the gas tax that Daniel Davis funded and supported and the other taxes that have been passed in the city in the last seven years. He thinks he's already won. That's why Daniel's not here, because he thinks it's owed to him. I disagree. And I think he is easy to beat. If we all get together, this city should be the safest, most vibrant city in the state of Florida. I am asking for your vote, and let's get moving. Ms. Allen? Thank you again for, for having me. I'm a native of Jacksonville. I love this city and its people. I will encourage and support community policing. I'll support the school board and the superintendent. My administration will function under honesty, accountability, and transparency. I'm a general contractor by trade. I understand the concerns of the working class. I am the working class. I'm not trying to turn Jacksonville red nor blue. I'm keeping it red, white, and blue for all of us. They call me the long shot, but I'm the shot, the best shot for the citizens of Jacksonville. And I stand ready, willing, able, and qualified to serve as your mayor, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you again so much for allowing me to be here. Thank you. I want to thank everyone. Uh, <laughs> before I turn it back to Bill, I want to make one observation of the difference today than when I first came to this city. Five women, three African Americans, of the seven people running for mayor. That is such progress for this city. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and if you'll bear with me one minute. First, I'd like to thank our past president, Hank Cox, for moderating today. I think he did a great job. <laughs> Not an easy task. To our esteemed guests, the Rotary Club of Jacksonville thanks you for your dedication to the city of Jacksonville. We especially thank you for sharing your views with our club. This was the first mayoral debate. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time today to uh, allow our members to ask questions, but I'm sure this won't be the last mayoral debate, and we're going to learn more as we go forward. Personally, I think this is the most significant election for a Jacksonville citizen. I believe our local government is the one that influences your life the most. Every year, our club provides grants to nonprofits in the city, and we want to uh, we continually support nonprofits in the area with a uh, key focus of late on the urban core. So, if you are a leader of a nonprofit or in leadership of one, please check out our website and look at our grant applications. These are for capital projects, and we've made a we've pretty much touched every nonprofit in the city. We'd like to help you out if we can. With that, for our members, remember there's no meeting next Monday. Um, we do have the Rotary Jaguar game on Sunday against the Ravens, so go Jags. 
Sherry's working on the, uh, for those of you who pre-order tickets. There is a board meeting after uh, this.